Olá, estou hoje aqui com o Dr. Carlos Simor, que é um especialista mundial em implantação e reprodução assistida. E eu vou aproveitar que ele está aqui em São Paulo e fazer uma pergunta para ele de um tema que é muito recorrente no consultório. Professor Carlos, obrigado por você estar aqui conosco hoje. Tá certo. Eu tenho uma, uma dúvida. A gente hoje tem vários estudos endometriais que se baseiam em exposição hormonal, microbioma, patógenos. Mas se ouve falar muito sobre imunologia. O que, que o senhor pensa sobre a imunologia e a interação imune entre embrião e mãe? É, the, the problem in English, better? Or, yes. The problem with immunology is that uh, it has been never been demonstrated at the clinical level that you can really intervene other than give corticoids, which is such a you know uh, such a, a wide uh, spectrum of action. Uh, at the basic level, it is very interesting to understand. At the end of the day, we need to just download this, um, this immunological cloud to a proper app that we can act. So for instance, in this chronic endometritis, what, uh, what we have tried to understand is what is the real presence of pathogens, other than talking about inflammation in the, in the endometrial mucosa. So I am not, uh, I don't have data, clinical data that demonstrate that this is the molecule that is affecting that immunological issue. Natural killer cells, they are being offered for decades and there is no such a clinical study for that. So the, I am not, I, I don't think, I am quite accepting about what uh, immunological actionable uh, products can give us. And do you see anything coming? Well, I don't. I don't see that. Uh, I, I don't see that something is coming uh, regarding that. I mean, now in implantation we have clearly the embryo. Mm -hmm. It is clear that haploid embryos and, uh, and and genetically normal embryos is the way to go, mm -hmm. not only for safety but also for effectiveness. Yes. And the endometrial part, the maternal part, uh, we are working on the cross communication between the mother and the embryo. How they they talk to each other and how they modify themselves. Then, uh, at the window of implantation, when the embryo attached, to really personalize the window. And then, of course, to know the microbiome present in the endometrial cavity, that this will be a healthy one. And then later on, what happens in the decidualization process when the embryo invades, and then what is the relationship between the decidua and the trophoblast as an important cause of clinical miscarriage with haploid embryos and later on for the, the onset of uh, late gestational uh, pathologies such as preeclampsia. So we try to make things that we can understand and could be actionable. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's, what I, that's the point. At the immunological level, if something comes with a path and at, uh, in an item that we can action, I will be delighted to, to explore it, but uh, so far this is just inflammation and inflammation and cortical. That's the only thing that we have. And how do you see progesterone levels, uh, cell progesterone levels, during the uh, luteal phase for predicting or for adequating the endometrium for implantation? Is it important to measure progesterone in the in blood? You know, it's always important to have as many uh, information as we can from our patients. The thing is, the, the important in pregnancy, not only in the window of opportunity, in the window of implantation, in the situation, uh, everything is related to the activation of the progesterone receptor. If you have a proper, uh, a minimum amount of progesterone, what we know that in the, in the human species is about 12 nanograms uh, during the peak of the, of the luteal phase. Uh, if you have a certain cutoff that we achieve by giving supplementation that we always do, the, the issue is the burden is on the receptor. Yes. If we are just increasing progesterone and the receptor is not working, is nothing is going to happen. I mean, you can measure progesterone, it's fine, but uh, the fact that uh, we are giving more progesterone and more progesterone is not going to make a huge difference for the whole patient because at the end the point is not the levels that of course there are some patients with they don't have good absorption but those should be rare mm -hmm. and we are giving so much progesterone that uh, we certainly achieve certain threshold which could be one nanogram uh, could be um, no could be 10 nanograms at the time of, of the, the embryo transfer 
but it has been reported pregnancies with one nanogram yeah. throughout the whole pregnancy. So the point is, uh, we should, of course, add progesterone. If we don't need progesterone to the patient, she will never implant. I think that the levels, minimal levels, they are achieved. And the attention should be focused on the progesterone receptor, which is what they are going to tell us in a personalized matter how this patient is going to respond. That's why the error test is so important. You will see the interaction. Exactly. That's why the error test is telling us how this receptor is going to act. Because you can have a huge amount of progesterone, and if you have a slow reacting receptor, the patient will be receptive after seven days of progesterone. If you transfer at day five, she will never become pregnant. And you are having a huge level of progesterone. Okay, that's right. it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Carlos. Thank you. You are very welcome.